Hey guys! <laughs> That's how you greet people for the union. You're like, hey guys! <laughs> okay. okay, that's the introduction. <laughs> hey guys! <Yeah. laughs> Welcome to our channel. We are back. We are back. Happy 2018. Yeah, happy new year. Happy new year. Yes. <laughs> so um, today we're going to talk about our story, the Lobola story. You know, so many people, one of my friends actually, when I told her that Andrew's going to pay Lobola, she was like, oh my God, this is going to be interesting. Can you sneak the camera in so that we can know the details yeah. of what's happening in the camera, in the Lobola? But obviously we're not going to able to do that. You know, it's culture, privacy and stuff like that but but we just obviously Andrew and I were not there when the Lobola was happening but we did find out obviously we should maybe explain that I don't know oh, okay, that sorry. because I told a lot of people that um, you know we went there and it's not some people were like huh what do you mean you weren't there oh okay so yeah. we're gonna explain how the Lobola negotiation works or how it worked for us how the whole process was so yeah. do you wanna like Tell them you are not supposed to be there. I was not supposed to be there. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, maybe just very quickly, uh, we did explain the baller in another video. I think. Yeah, we did. Like a, a quick recap we can is. Recap, yeah, for yeah, like new Yeah, it's, it's like the sort of um, negotiation um, and a payment that happens um, from my family to Audacious family. And the purpose of it is to, um, I guess, bring the families together um, and also to, once the agreement is reached, to then allow us to marry each other. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, it's like a, um, uh, you, how do you explain this? It's like a representation of people from each of the two families that, um, that meet and I guess one thing in general that I've learned about Lobola is that it's um, very different no matter who you talk to, yeah, from culture to culture, experience. but then even within the culture, mm -hmm. family to family, yeah. it's like it's totally, it's totally different. I mean, I got advice mm -hmm. from so many different people and so many people just had totally different like <laughs> ideas of how it's supposed to be done. I remember right at the end, one of the guys who was joining us. Um, my my team was like, oh yeah, and we'll have to be there at 2 a.m. in the morning because <laughs> Lobola negotiations are always done before sunrise. Yeah. And I'd never heard that before. And he's like, oh no, that's how it's done that's every that, every yeah. time that he's gone to one. Mm -hmm. And then I ask other people, and they say they've never heard of it before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's like it's totally different. So I guess we can only tell the story of how it went for us. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess we had. Um, um, usually, most often, it's uncles that, repre yeah. that represent um, the two um, people who are being married. So on Aldacia's side, it's her uncles. And then on my side, because my uncles are all in Australia, um, mm -hmm. my parents were over for a holiday. And um, so we thought, okay, let's try and make a team of temporarily adopted uncles. Uncle. African <laughs> um, uncles for Andrew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. And also um, And my, people that are experienced could... as well that mm. know about the Lobola. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that's the other thing. So choosing uncles is you usually choose the uncles who have done the process before mm -hmm. so they know what's supposed to happen. And also you choose uncles and not usually the direct parents because yeah. um, the uncles are a little less emotionally attached than the parents so mm -hmm. if there's certain things being said in the negotiations that might become a bit emotional mm -hmm. for you know for a father or a parent for example because they're talking about the, the child um, you know if it's an uncle they can more easily I guess uh, react in an appropriate yeah. uh, controlled <laughs> unemotional sort mm -hmm. of a, a manner um, so yeah, I guess my, my negotiating team then was a bit of a, a, well, a very big mixture of people. I invited some people to, to one join from Congo, my team. Yeah, so there was my... One Africana, South African, yeah. one baby, one Zulu. Oh, it was beautiful though. You yeah. had a multicultural So there was a few apples. friends. There was three, three close mm -hmm. friends, the Africans, the Congo, and the Zulu. Um, and then uh, my dad, as 
just as an observer. They allowed him to go, but he wasn't supposed to say anything. anything. Um, and then through one of my friends, the Zulu guy, he um, managed to find two other um, local Sipedi guys. Um, because my culture, it's Pedi and Venda. So I had like two cultures because all my uncles from the Venda side and the Pedi side, because my mom is Pedi and my dad is Venda. Yeah. yeah, so we thought if we bring at least two Betty guys and we have some idea of the of the culture and the traditions that, that should be expected at, at a Lobola mm. uh, of that culture. So, so that was the that was the six guys that were on my team and then I don't know how many of your uncles there were there, yeah. I'm not sure, but there was a few. <laughs> yeah, I don't know as yeah. well. So I mean, it's, it's uh, well, let me give some of the highlights of the story because it was a really interesting intricate process the whole thing but yeah. i guess generally like um so Aldesha and i weren't supposed to be there at the negotiations um the original plan was that i would go and i would wait in the car while my team went into Aldesha's house and and did the negotiations and then i would join afterwards but mm -hmm. Aldesha convinced me the evening before that we would take some photos while the negotiations were happening which i thought was was wrong because the point of the negotiations is that you know the the husband and the wife only come together afterwards <laughs> uh, so i told my team and they were like it's not a good idea but um <laughs> i don't know in. if it's wrong i gave in <laughs> i asked my mom my mom was okay with it because uh -huh. <laughs> i wanted like nice pictures for other grand darling <laughs> so yeah so they she came up to the lodge where um I was staying with my guys and we took photos while while um, my team went for the to Audacious place for the negotiations. So we yeah, so we weren't there. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. One of the funny things that happened when the guys arrived at Audacious place was that um, my aunt Audacious aunt was laying on the ground across across the gate with sort of like her face down um sort of under, under her arms type of thing sort of blocking the way for them to get in yeah. and um so simon the the guy who you know knew what was supposed to happen he asked for some money from one of the guys because I, I distributed some some money amongst my uh, my negotiating team so um one of the guys passed a like a hundred rand like a ten ten dollar uh, roughly note um to simon and simon Put it underneath the um, the arm of the of the auntie, and the auntie looked at the note, and then she shook her head, and <laughs> so it's not enough. So then Simon took another note and put the note under, and then when it was enough, then okay, then she got up and she moved out of their way, and then she ran to the front door mm -hmm. of the house apparently, <laughs> mm -hmm. and lay down in front of the front door of the house, mm -hmm. and they had to do the same thing. Um, again put some more notes under her arms until she, until she saw there was enough notes and then she got out of their way yeah um so there was lots of little like traditional type processes that happened along the way there was other things like one of my you're supposed to take your hat off when you enter the front gate i think it was yeah. um and so five out of the six guys took their hats off at the front gate but the one guy remained with his hat on until the front door of the house and only took it off then so when they were busy doing mm -hmm. the negotiations then um my team they got a fine from mm -hmm. Aldacia's family because it was considered disrespectful to wear the hat mm -hmm. into the um into the into the property so mm -hmm. yeah i mean there's other things that happened as well like when, when my guys got there and they sat down in your lounge room um they no one came and spoke to them they made them sit there for quite some time and it was a really hot day and they were all wearing suits jackets. and <laughs> yeah. jackets included <laughs> and um so they waited and they waited and eventually one of your uncles came in and apparently he came in and he sat down opposite and he just he didn't say anything he just looked i don't think he even looked at them in the eyes or anything he just yeah. sort of stared across them and then after some time he got up and he left without saying anything and then made them wait for even longer and then eventually all the uncles came in and they still wouldn't say anything so eventually they had to pay money to Wulam Lom to open them up yeah eventually <laughs> yeah. Simon then he knew okay we have to pay the money so um so then they paid the money for that and um and there was important part they have to do to recruit to present me 
and I was not around. Yeah, so there's another tradition that, that happens um, where they would normally lie the bride and two female relatives of the bride on the floor and they cover them with blankets. Um, they pick they pick other females that look similar to the bride, mm -hmm. and then um, the us, my family has yeah. to yeah, choose pick which one is is Aldacia. Yeah. And so because Aldacia wasn't there, um, they said, well, you would probably choose the wrong one to start off with. So they knew that I was <clears> with <throat> you. Remember, they asked your dad and your dad. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. my uncle called me. They're like, "Where are you?" Then I was like, "I'm with Andrew." <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. So then yeah. they they gave us a fine for that <laughs> because you weren't supposed to be with me, mm -hmm. and then they said, and that also then affects how we play this game because we obviously we can't play the game because Aldacia is not here. Mm -hmm. So they sort of simulated the game <laughs> in that they said, well, if we had played the game, then you probably would have picked the wrong girl, and then you mm -hmm. we would have charged you so much money for that. So they made them pay for that, mm -hmm. and then you probably would have picked the wrong one yeah. the second time. Um, and then you would have paid us for that, so they made them pay again. And then they said on the third time, then you would have picked her. Um, yeah. So, oh, there was lots of other things. They wouldn't let my team take off the jackets as well. So my guys had they had to request to take off the jackets, and Aldacia's family wouldn't wouldn't allow them to take them off. Um, it was. I think the idea was to make them feel uncomfortable so they can in, agree the, to in the heat, so they'll agree quicker. The amount that they yeah. charge them. Because it, it's a long discussion. I mean, the whole thing mm -hmm. took somewhere between three and four hours or so. Hours, I think it yeah. started at 11 and, yeah, I think it finished around two yeah. or after two. So, yeah, three hours yeah. or so. Yeah. yeah. So, in the middle of the day, 11 a.m. till 2 p.m. in... Uh, in Lumpopo is very very hot. <laughs> so really hot. It did work apparently. They said at the yeah. end, towards the end of the negotiation, when there was some small things being agreed, then yeah, my guys were agreeing very quickly <laughs> because they wanted it to finish. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Audacious family was comfortable. They were wearing short sleeves and they had mm. cloths to wipe their foreheads when they were sweating. <laughs> they were sitting next to a nice fan. <laughs> Yeah. Drinking yeah. water and not giving your guys water. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so then, obviously, I guess the main part of it is really like uh, a price has to be suggested by Audacia's um, family of um, what they would like to be paid um, as part of the labola. And then initially, how many cows did they say? Uh, I think it was fourteen cows. Mm. They said. Um, so they say fourteen cows, but then they tell you the the price of a cow. So then the negotiation becomes, a, I guess, a monetary um, negotiation or cows. Um, yeah. <laughs> sort of yeah. is one one or the other. Mm. Um, so they're talking prices and a number of cows, and then so my excuse me, my team came back and said, "Oh no, fourteen cows is way too many. You know that's not fair." Um, I can't forget what other stories it was, but it was, you know, you're not selling your, your daughter to us and things like that. It would be much more fair if we paid seven cows. Mm -hmm. um, and then Aldacia's family said, well, seven cows doesn't work because you have to, it has to be an even number of cows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there was lots of, um, yeah, back and forth negotiations then around mm -hmm. numbers of cows. And then they were talking in terms of monetary value instead of number of cows and then someone on my team apparently said well the number that we're now talking about um is, is an odd number of cows um and they said that to your family and then your family said no it's an even number of cows but we've changed the price of the cow <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so the numbers balanced again <laughs> um yeah so it was um a long difficult process and I mean for for us it was like for me particularly I was a bit um, I was nervous I don't know if you yeah were I was well. extremely nervous mm. I don't know why I was nervous why were you nervous babe do you know I don't know I guess because it was just knowing what's gonna happen because it was just it was taking long like the first couple of hours I yeah. wasn't too, too nervous. worried about yeah. it but then it was taking long and then you start to think things, things like, like what if geez maybe do? the families don't like each other maybe they're yeah. arguing maybe they can't come yeah. to an agreement yeah. and then what's gonna happen been, yeah. um, so I held out from contacting the guys for a long time I waited well I thought it was a long time until like <laughs> one, one thirty or something mm -hmm. so two and a half hours or so and then I messaged 
um, and one of the guys and asked him, you know, how's it going? And he replied to me saying, you yeah, it's going tough. We're still on opposite sides of the fence. Um, <laughs> I was like, wow, um, I hope this thing works out. And then, yeah. mm, not, not long after that, they called Yeah, me. because when before <clears throat> that, um, remember I came to your lodge and I was mm. trying to do makeup mm. and I couldn't, I couldn't able to do my makeup. I probably tried 10 times. Remember I was like, I was mm. like wiping off my eyebrows. I was shaking. I was having a panic attack. I was like, oh my God, I was literally <laughs> yeah, stressing. I was not stressed. happy. I don't know. I was stressing <laughs> as well. It was crazy. Yeah. I don't know. I used to hear people saying when they get married, they, they get nervous and whatever. I didn't understand until the mini Lobola thing happened. <laughs> Hopefully on our wedding day it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It was nerve wracking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but then the guys, they called mm -hmm. me and they said, oh, we've, we've come to an agreement now. We've, yeah, this is, this is the price and there's some other few things. There was a small list of other things that needed to be gifts that needed to be given. Um, the traditional wedding. Yeah. Or for the yeah, wedding. Yeah. Know. For the wedding, mm -hmm. um, which yeah, had a later date. And they said that we could come down then, um, or that I could come down. You had already left by that point. Mm -hmm. um, and so they said, okay, I could come down now. Um, and I was with my mum. Um, and we could join at your your place and then there would, be, would be a celebration mm -hmm. yeah so the, then we did that and um yeah when we arrived uh my, like my mum and i got out of the car and we were walking through the village um to Aldacia's place we parked like just a few houses away and as we were walking along the neighbors they saw us and they started they, singing yeah and they came clapping yeah, they, and and ovulating like, yeah. making their what's the noise <laughs> Yeah, that <laughs> 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 and so then they were following us and yeah. singing and clapping mm. and um, yeah, it was quite an interesting entrance. <laughs> yeah, and then we had a really nice celebration there, and you could tell um, the guys who had been involved in the Labola. Um, mm. So my my uncles and um, Aldacia's uncles were um, very close. Then they were they were Just good then. friends. You could yeah. you could tell that they were like all standing around talking to each other mm -hmm. and um, exchanging stories and you know uh, talking about the process and how it had mm -hmm. gone and, and other things as well. So it was really. Um, you could see the reason why they actually do the thing and it, and mm. it does um, bring really bring the together. families yeah, closer together because mm. they've gone through this um, sort of difficult, uh, difficult <laughs> process um, mm. to get to this agreement. You know, it's not mm. really about the amount of the payment or, or anything. Mm. It's about going through that process yeah. um, which which brings the families together and it's all like it was fun from what I could tell, even yeah. though, you know, obviously they were a bit uncomfortable and things, but that all just sort of added to the, to the story. So yeah. all these little traditions along the way, um, you know, the fines and things like that mm. just makes it a really interesting, um, interesting experience, you know? Yeah. So it's actually, I was initially when I first was hearing about the bowler, I, I thought it seems like a strange old ceremony that doesn't make any sense, but, yeah. um, it's actually a really good thing, you know? Yeah. And um, I think my family would also agree that they feel much closer to Aldeisha's family after yeah. going through that. Um, mm. So, yeah, good experience. And then there was the whole um, celebration ceremony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, we had spoken with Aldeisha's Pasta. pasta. Maybe I could do a video where you guys see where we went to visit the pasta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we met him earlier in the year. Mm -hmm. uh, only a few weeks before the Lobola, actually. Mm -hmm. And so we told him this is the date we plan to do the Lobola negotiations and then that we would plan to then be engaged and then have our wedding, um, you know, later this, later this year. Mm -hmm. And so that was, that was the agreement. And Pastor was very happy with that, and um, yeah. So then, after the labola, now we are all here. We're having the party, um, and the pastor 
asks Aldatia and I to come up to the front um, and be presented and that he would bless bless the engagement ring. Um, so he was um, read some some parts from the Bible and he read a um, a blessing of the of the ring, mm. and um, then he asked me to repeat after him, and <laughs> you know he starts reading these these verses, wow. and I'm repeating after him, and then I realise that it's vows, <laughs> wedding vows, <laughs> only part way through. Now here I am already saying them, standing up in front of Audacious entire family <laughs> and friends <laughs> and. Friends and you know, there was maybe 40, 50 people there or yeah. something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, um, <laughs> this wasn't the plan. <laughs> but I wasn't, I couldn't stop Audacious Pasta <laughs> halfway through <laughs> and tell him, um, what's happening? <laughs> so we just went along with it. Um, and then Audacious said the vows. And then, did we say, I do? I I don't, we, do we do? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah. we did. Yeah. Yeah, and then they, he pronounced us husband and wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, which we were very surprised about. And this. We um, get a surprise! Really? <laughs> so, yeah, we basically got married. Marriage. <laughs> without realizing. <laughs> so, but I mean. We're still engaged, uh, guys. We're in between. It's so yeah. confusing. Yeah, we so we're somewhere in between, and I'm not, I'm not sure. Traditionally, really. we are married, mm. but now we're engaged. So, <laughs> we yeah. We still to enjoy the engagement. We're, we're going to do engagement exactly, for a shoot. Exactly, because we only got engaged like a couple of weeks before yeah. the La Bola. So, yeah. you know, yeah. as far as we're concerned, this is our engagement now, and then we are still planning to have our um, wedding or weddings. But he, later he's this my year. husband, I'm the wife. But we were pronounced husband and wife, so yeah, yeah, it's strange. We're sort of calling each other husband I, and wife. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, even if, let's be honest, if the pastor didn't pronounce us husband and wife, we mm. were still going to be husband and wife traditionally, because if someone pays La Bola traditionally, mm -hmm. you are traditionally married because the custom law in South Africa mm. recognizes mm. the La Bola. Yeah, we should probably be, get some legal advice on <laughs> whether we're married or not. Maybe we are married. Remember in the form that I just filled, there was like married or single and I clicked marriage and the kind of marriage is like traditional, I think, and I clicked the traditional yeah, one. Yeah, on, on, yeah. on form, certain forms here and they ask you your marriage status, it yeah. gives you an option to say it's traditional or my form that I'm having to fill out now for something says tribal. Yeah, it's tribal. tribal that's, law. Yeah, tribal law. That's traditional mm -hmm. marriage. Mm -hmm. We are married in that regard. In Africa, we are married or African, but in the Western, we're still engaged. So we are between the two, mm. just because of our culture being together. So if I want to be called a fiance, so I'm still a fiance. You are still a fiance. If I want to call your husband, so husband. That's, yeah, that's what you're saying. It depends. Easy. It depends on the context and who we're talking to and whatever. If we tell them that we're engaged or that we're husband and wife, yeah, it's very confusing. <laughs> you can use it to your advantage sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> So that's the story. That was the yeah. main, the main things, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's lots of other funny stuff that happened, but mm -hmm. it's a long story. <laughs> yeah, all of the bits. Those were the most interesting bits, I think. So yeah, guys, this is our story. This is our Lobola story, and yeah, I hope it made sense and it was entertaining. <laughs> 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 we enjoyed it. We had a great time. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. I like how you do your hand there. Why are you doing like that? <laughs> it's so How weird. do you do it? I look at my hand. Yeah, it's like this. <laughs> and it's just good. Maybe because you've got a bigger hand than mine. <laughs> I can say bye. Bye. That doesn't look right. <laughs> I'm getting back. <laughs> okay, go.